Welcome back to another Tradeouts Technical Analysis Learning Module. This is the Introduction to Fibonacci Beginner Series, Volume Number Two, where we discuss Fib retracements and specifically the Golden Pocket. But this is basically a follow-up to Video One. I touched on Fib retracements just a little bit. We're going to dive deep into them, how you can use them in your trading. I use them heavily in my trading. Very, very powerful tool. Let's get to the video. And as usual, the disclaimer, please pause the video, read this entirely, all contents for entertainment and educational purposes only, nothing is financial advice. All right, so Fibonacci retracements or Fib retracements for short. So what is a retracement? Well, a retracement is a short-term price correction that takes place during a larger trending move. So it, it, this can be bullish, meaning that you're anticipating price to move higher or this could also be bearish if you're anticipating price to be lower or continue to a uh, you know a stronger trending move to the downside finding entries using fib retracement levels it's a great way to enter a position at a better price if you think the larger trend is going to ultimately continue in that direction right so let's say again you're bullish meaning that you think price is going to go much higher than and you know, it could be whatever you talk about bitcoin if you think Bitcoin is going to move significantly higher and continue that bullish trend that it's currently in, then any retracements that you get, any pullbacks that you get, if it comes down to certain levels that you can help find using Fibonacci retracements, typically if price comes down to those lower levels, it's a better entry for you, right? Than just buying at random places. Um, ultimately, when you're buying pullbacks, or you're buying retracements, and if they come to certain specific levels, which we'll get into shortly, those typically end up being better risk reward entries. And then when you're pulling your FIB retracements, so you always are going to pull them from a swing high and a swing low or vice versa, right? And we'll get into what those actually look like on a, um, on a chart in a minute. Uh, but again, you're gonna be using very important swing highs and swing lows, and you're using market structure to determine where you're gonna pull your FIB retracements from. And the final tip that I have for you um, on this slide is always pull your retracements from left to right. And again, I'm going to show you in a minute what I mean by that, but always pull from left to right. Anybody who tells you to go right to left, I would probably be very careful listening to anything else that they're saying because you always pull your fibs from left to right. So another quick tip that I have for you before we get into the live examples are, do I use wicks or bodies when I'm pulling my FIB retracements? And this is kind of one of those things that, that's a bit split, I would say, for people who use FIB retracements. Some people pull from the wicks, um, which is what I do. And then you have others that use the candle bodies to actually measure their FIB retracements. And I'm not going to sit here and say that one, you know, one if you're wrong if you're using bodies or you're you're wrong if you're using wicks the point is you're going to use whatever works for you in your technical analysis for myself i prefer to use wicks because wicks um, and looking at these three candles here again the wicks are you know this little thin line or the wicks that extend from the body of the candle and they simply represent so this um this candle in general um or right here this wick at the high represents the highest high that price traded within this specific candle. And simply to the downside, it's the opposite. So at the very, very bottom of this wick here, it was the lowest price at which price traded during this candle. It's that simple. So again, for myself, when I'm looking for my swing lows and my swing highs, that are the two points that I'm going to use for my Fibonacci retracement, I prefer to look for the extremes. So the absolute low and the absolute high then the retracement is going to measure from that, not from the candle bodies. Because for myself, I want the absolute low and the absolute high. And I've had a lot of success in my personal trading doing it this way. So this is how I prefer to do it. Obviously, I don't, you know, again, if other people use bodies or you want to check those out and maybe they work better for you, totally okay. But again, I use wicks just because I found that 
um, as far as the certain levels being hit um, using you know the fib the Fibonacci retracements I just find them to be a lot more accurate for this the assets that I trade so before I get too in depth with the fib retracements like I want to show you how it actually works on a chart that way I think it'll be a little bit easier to follow along because so far it's been kind of slides of text right I want to give you a visual um, to help you kind of understand it before I go back to the slides and really kind of dig into what fib retracements are how they're used etc cetera, etc cetera. so if you're on trading view and this is Dixie you're going to recognize this this is literally the same um this is the same chart from video one and I'm doing this on purpose for the beginning because you already saw the visual um hopefully of where the golden pocket was lining up and but I'm going to show you how I got that okay so I'm going to show you that and then we're going to go back in kind of dig in a little bit more so here is your fib retracement tool simply right here over on the left side you can actually click on this and it'll be the one on top you just click fib retracement and the well, the first thing that you're going to do on this chart so literally not taking into account any other price action that you see where is your swing low and where is your swing high the swing high is the easiest or should be the easiest to identify because it's going to be the highest point where price was trading on your chart which is going to be right here right so um, again we're looking at we're only looking at the price that's on this chart um okay so again your swing high is right here that's very obvious but where's your swing low well the swing low for here is going to be right here you actually see it's a pretty equal low from over here but i like to use um obviously going to pull from this point and the, the another reason why i pull from this point which is incredibly important is this is the beginning of the impulsive move so this gets lost on some people but this is incredibly powerful and very important okay even if there's a lower low here so let's say that price came down and maybe it was somewhere around here yes i'm still aware of it i want to know where you know i will do a separate fibonacci pool for that but considering the type of price action that we see here and then you come into this low that is literally where my cursor is right here the the specific reason why i want to pull from there is because this is also where price got very impulsive right so we were basically in this sideways range really nice consolidation right here before very strong impulsive move to the upside so i want to know this absolute low here this is where i'm going to pull my fib retracement so always pull left to right remember so your um your swing low is right here your swing high is right here so you're going to take your cursor align it up nice and neat left to right come all the way up to the top of this wick here I have to zoom in a little bit because this is a, this is kind of hard to do there we go then you zoom out so what you're measuring right now okay so this is what a standard fib retracement tool looks like and this is a bullish fib retracement which we're going to get into in the next slide but i wanted to, you're going to get an example right here of what a bullish fib retracement is the trend is up so price forms its high and starts retracing now the purpose of this tool is to find your retracement targets where do you think price or like you're going to see where price ends up getting a reversal from and you're going to see this a uh, significant amount of time when it comes to um when it comes to the charts but again this is a bullish fib retracement the trend is clearly in an uptrend price for it starts to reverse here so now you're looking for a potential entry uh, because again if you're buying the high and price starts reversing against you you're going to lose money right if you think that this asset is going to continue moving you know in a bullish manner to the upside then you're looking to buy retracements to get yourself into a position so we're going to break down what each fib level does kind of what it means and the types of reactions that you can look for um, that's going to be later in this video but for here, very simple demonstration of finding um, a, a key level. And that's you always going to be your 618. This is the most important. I was going to say it's the most important fib, but it is definitely the second I have a swing low and a confirmed swing high, 
I am instantly like that's the thing you don't have to wait for price to move this far down in order for you to use this tool you as soon as you make a high and price starts retracing you can you can draw this right away and be looking for your your retracement targets so one thing that you'll notice about my charts is that i always have i, I almost always have this yellow box on my chart i might not have the fib retracement tool up um because it it's kind of a lot of lines right and I'll and this sometimes this interferes with the other levels that are on my chart obviously this chart is blank um, but one thing that you'll find is you'll find these yellow boxes which this is called the golden pocket and we're going to learn more about that later on in this video but interesting enough you have your low you have your confirmed swing high once price starts reversing off of here. Okay, so then you know you can right away, you can be looking for your levels of interest. And for me, again, the area between the 618 and the 66 are always going to be an area where I'm going to be very interested to see what price does. And sure enough here, you get a reversal, um, or not a, you know, a bit of a reversal, but you get a pullback or a retracement right down to your 618. And then price gets a nice bounce off of here. So this ended up being a really, really nice buy zone. Now, one thing also that I want to say is that I do not, like I don't blindly trade Fibonacci levels. I think they're incredibly powerful, but I always like to have some other form of confluence here, which I discussed a bit in video one, but I like to have something else that's lining up close to the different FIB levels that I am eyeing for um, potential targets. I always want to see, you know, again, whether it's um, market structure, um, there could be a support resistance level there. There could be another FIB retracement that's lining up that gives you Fibonacci confluence, which we talked a bit about in video one. Um, there could be the VWAP there, there could be a number of tools. It could be, you know, maybe there's a specific moving average that's lining up right where that golden pocket is, something like that. I want to see something that's going to add, you know, that's going to solidify that level for being a level of interest. Okay. So again, showed you really briefly how to use this tool. And um, we're going to have a couple more examples here in this video. But it's definitely something that I wanted to go over before we jump into the specifics. But again, you know, the FIB retracement, incredibly powerful. Just be careful trading this on its own, but I will tell you that these these retracements, especially when you come into the golden pocket region, you you do tend to see a lot of reactions um, off of that area for sure. And also, just so I can show you how to pull this level um, that I got, and there was a larger fib retracement that I pulled from video one to show you the fib confluence that you had at this level. All right. So if you zoom out a little bit, so it was this low here. So now if you're looking again, this is a bit different price action because now we're incorporating this low. The swing high is still the same. That's the, still the highest point on the chart. But now if you're looking for a, an, a, an extreme swing low, I mean the lowest point that price visited on this specific chart, it is now down here. So this is still an incredibly important um, low here. And the reason, again, because this is right where price started to get impulsive. So this is a very important pull. But now you can go back to your fib retracement and you can pull from the very low. And this is still a bullish fib retracement, by the way. So this is still classified as a bullish fib retracement. Zoom in here. All right, so you're going to use this extreme low or this swing low here and the exact same high that we used in the first Fibonacci retracement pull. Now, again, this gets a little messy, but what I wanted to show you was that the 0.5 Fib of this larger pull that we did, the 0.5 Fibonacci lines up almost perfectly with the 618 of the smaller pull that we did. That's called Fibonacci confluence. And if you look at where the 0 0.5 comes across to, it is this low. So you have the 0 0.5 right here, 
and your 618 or the golden pocket of the smaller fib pool lining up very nicely giving you more you know more of a solid idea saying that this is going to be a strong support which indeed it was and you saw a pretty nice you can, you can just use your tool assist just from the bottom here to the top you saw a 16 and a half percent gain or 16 and a half percent bounce off of this test into this region so this is a, an example of using fib retracements it's a bit more of an advance i say because again we're doing multiple pulls and now i want to go in so i'm going to delete this clean this up but now i'm going to go in and explain what bullish fibonacci retracements are and bearish fibonacci retracements are that way you can see the difference now that you had a visual kind of what it looks like on a screen all right so bullish fibonacci retracements you just saw two examples of what a bullish fib retracement is but again to clarify it's when you have a short-term price correction that takes place during a larger overall bullish trending move so you go back to the chart if you need to and re-watch that but the trend was clearly bullish it was clearly moving up right and then once price started to top out at the swing high that we talked about once price topped out there and started to retrace that's when you put on your fib retracement you pull a bullish fib retracement just like we did always from left to right and you're finding your pullback targets which we you know again the 618 is always going to be a very critical one that i'm going to be looking at every single time and what happened well again trend is up you get your retracement down to your key levels price finds a bottom there before reversing and continuing the trend making new highs right so that is a bullish fib retracement and you can use bullish fibonacci retracements to find ideal pullback targets for a possible long entry again so this is where you're looking to buy or maybe you're already long from lower maybe you already took a position from lower when you see these types of retracements happen those can often be great compounding opportunities so if you wanted to add to your position um, or buy the dip right if you wanted to add to your position that's usually a great tool to use to identify strong areas where you can add on to your position which again adding on string that's a different topic that we'll discuss later on but usually when something's trending really hard the opportunity to buy the dip add to your position and you know if price continues on that trend usually that means you're doing pretty well so the golden pocket the crazy amazing incredibly powerful i've made a significant sum of money from trading the golden pocket and again this is another thing where you know you, this is not something that i take trades blindly from here although you'll see sometimes why you might want to because this is again it's very it's a very powerful level um, but simply the golden pocket is the area between the 618 which we know from video one is a very important level and it is basically the foundation of fibonacci and the 0 0.65 retracement so that's when you go to set up your standard um fib retracement or when you go to trading view and you click on the fib retracement tool that's what you're going to see it's the golden pocket is the area between the 0 0.618 and the 0 0.65 so again, that's always going to be an area of interest when you're pulling these retracements, both bearishly and bullishly. So there is an adjustment that I made a few years back where I actually used the 0 0.66 instead of the 0 0.65 as the bottom part to my golden pocket. Totally fine if you want to stick to the standard 0 0.65. Um, you know, it's, it's a, I'd say it's a relatively small difference, although the point is when it comes to trading, is that these small differences add up over time. But I'll, I'll just give you a brief example of why I actually use the 0 0.66 now. And it's, basically, I have a friend who introduced me to Fibonacci. I mean, she didn't introduce, I was, I was aware of Fibonacci, um, you know, but I didn't, I definitely did not use it as extensively as I do today. And she is literally the queen, I call her the queen of fibs. Like she is, she is just, like I, she literally uses Fib, Fibonacci, that's it. She uses nothing else. Everything she does, she just pulls fibs. And she is a phenomenal trader. So again, I 
can't do that to that level because you know i have a very specific way that i like to trade i love fibonacci when it comes for you know when it comes to confluence purposes i think it's incredibly powerful um when i see a golden pocket for instance lining up with another area of support or resistance you know whether it be um, a horizontal support resistance level uh, whether it be again an ema uh you know whatever it might be like there's a number of tools that the, the point is they're incredibly powerful when they have confluence with other you know uh with with other support resistance levels but she would literally just use these just use fib retracements and like fibonacci in general she would literally just use that and nothing else and she was an incredible trader so she used the 0.66 and i thought it was really interesting i actually tested it myself for a long time and i tested the 0.65 all the way up to the 0.69 um, I did a seven for the zero dot seven for the it's a little weird because it's kind of far away from the standard, right? I don't want to get like too far away from what like the traditional golden pocket is. But I have found that the the two that produced like the best results was the six six and the six seven. Um, but ultimately I just chose the six six because it's basically splitting the original six five and the six seven, right? So it's just kind of pick a happy medium. And the six six was very you know, it was very well respected. So that again a little bit of a backstory to why i use that and it's going to be a slight variance from the 0 0.65 but again the queen of fibs she does and uh you know i gotta hand it to her again she's a big reason why i dug into fibonacci as much as i did and i'm very thankful because it definitely helped my trading out and i use it extensively every day so very very um, very passionate about the fibonacci so what is a bearish fib retracement? We saw an example, two examples of what bullish Fibonacci retracements are. So I want to talk a bit about bearish fib retracements and they're literally just the opposite. So a bearish retracement is a short-term price correction that takes place during a larger overall bearish trending move. All right. So price bearish means price is going down. So if price is moving really strongly to the downside, and then you get the pullbacks, right? Or the, the bounces, I guess I should say. A lot of times, like that is the retracement targets that you're trying to find when you're using the FIB retracement tool. And we can use a bearish Fibonacci retracement to find ideal pullback targets for the possible short entry. Or maybe you're in a long and you want to find take profits, okay? But usually, again, if you're trying to identify pullback targets for a possible short entry, or again, if you're already short from higher up and it's a very strong trend, you get a nice bounce into a key Fibonacci level. That could be a nice area to compound your short, right? So again, bearish Fib retracements can be used to find potential targets to sell the rip. Opposite of buy the dip, right? Buy the dip is for bullish scenarios where you want to, you know, every pullback you get, you're going to be adding to your position. Again, I'm not saying that, I'm just like, that's how people think, right? And then for the bearish retracements, they're often used to find opportunities to sell the rip because you're expecting price to reverse, go back to the down and continue the downside movement, right? Continue the bearish trend. And it's the same thing for bearish Fibonacci retracements. You always pull your retracements from the left to the right. So we'll get into an example here in just a second, but bearish fib retracements, you start with the swing high and then you're pulling down to your swing low. Okay, so it is literally the opposite of a bullish Fibonacci retracement. Bearish Fibonacci retracements, one more time, you start from the left to the right, but you start with your swing high, the highest point on your chart down to the lowest part of the chart that you're trying to measure, okay? So let's do an example. So one of the most memorable bearish Fibonacci retracements that I can possibly remember, and that I this is the first one that comes to mind every single time I think about it, is this example that I'm gonna share with you. It's incredibly powerful, unbelievable. Um, and this is Bitcoin, so, we are looking at 
price action from 2017, late 2017. You remember the year 20K top that we had? And looking at this crazy price action, it was an amazing time to be trading. Um, and then ultimately your swing low here in December, which is the 3K bottom, all right? So we're gonna do a bearish Fib retracement to see if we can identify any interesting levels um, along the way. So you're bearish, you're gonna go over here, get your tool right here, Fib retracement. And remember, this is a bearish Fib retracement. So we're gonna start left to right as usual. And we're going to go from our swing high, which is the absolute highest point on the chart, down to the swing low, which is the absolute lowest point on the chart. And this, not to confuse you, but we're basically doing a macro Fib pull, meaning we're doing a Fib, uh, we're, we're trying to measure, we're, we're taking a Fib retracement from a very high time frame. So when you're using these Fib retracements, especially to do like macro technical analysis, I mean like high time frame stuff, they're very, very powerful in my opinion. So again, we're gonna start from your swing high, your 20K high, all the way down to your low. Make sure I get that right. There we go. So, and by the way, there's a magnet tool right here on TradingView that is very helpful when you activate your magnet tool. It's gonna help, it's gonna help your tools snap to the points uh, that you're trying to get. You know, otherwise you, I mean, this is if you, you know, and I'm very particular about my FIB levels, especially when you're trading off it, you want them to be as exact as possible, right? Because like, if you just freehand these, and you know, even if they're like a hundred bucks off, which when you're trying to measure massive amount of price action like this, it's easy to mess up. So again, for precision, I really recommend using the magnet tool. So first thing I do, pull my bearish fib retracement to try to find pullback targets, right? So obviously this is a very bearish trend. So we're gonna be looking for a pullback or a retracement back up to some higher levels here and look for a potential trade, all right? So the first thing that I do, draw my golden pocket and it doesn't matter again this is a historical um this is a his you know a historical example so obviously we already have price but i'll show you another example here where we can just pull uh, one um whatever like you know recent price action is we can do that as well so i'm going to draw my golden pocket what do you know so your 20k bitcoin top in 2017 all the way down to your 2018 3k low and guess where your retracement was price all the way back up to your golden pocket how amazing is that and what what happened after this is even more impressive so again very bearish trend you have your swing high your swing low what happens to price right so what happens to price you literally come up here run into your golden pocket, which by the way, there was other confluence here that was telling you that this was a phenomenal trade. So I'm not gonna get into that because it doesn't have to do with Fibonacci specifically, but there was confluence here at this level for, for this to react the way that it did. So which is even, even more awesome. Uh, but anyway, you literally rotated all the way back down to the very bottom. So this, just using your standard Fib retracement that it took me, really, if I wasn't talking, it would take me two seconds to pull this, okay? Gave you a literal 20K top to 3K low, golden pocket. And it was literally the high before price reversed, you know, a lot. But price literally went down 75% off of touching this level. Incredibly powerful. So that is um, a bearish Fib retracement. So now let's go, I'm gonna delete this. Let's go fast forward all the way to today, all right? So where am I gonna pull a bearish Fib retracement from? There's two different points that I'd like to highlight here. So we're gonna do one from here just because you have a very clean swing high uh, and a swing low. And then we're gonna do one from here as well, which is like literally price as we see it right now. Okay, so here's one for you. Literally your high down to your low. And you can see that your golden pocket, so this is what we're gonna draw. How cool is that though, right? So we're 
pulling from your previous all-time high down to your $47,000 low. Price started reversing. So as soon as you see a reaction off of here, price starts moving off. You can pull this retracement right away and you get a reaction right off your golden pocket. Price pulls back, wicks through your 6.6 a bit, right? But ultimately, you get a really nice pullback. Now, it's not the exact high. Price actually pushes through here before it ends up rolling over. But the point is, you got a really nice reaction off of your golden pocket region, right? So that was a really nice one. And then we can go to, um, you do a few more examples, maybe. I think uh, you can do one really locally. That would be good. I think if there's any other good ones to do. Uh, I mean, well, here's here's another example that we can do. So let me delete this. So again, a bit of distance, right? So you have another swing high, right? This isn't your all-time high, but what this is, is this is a pivot before price cascades to the downside. So again, you know, price came up, made its high, and then really, really, really strong move to the downside, very impulsive. So this is definitely a point of interest. So what you can do is pull a bearish fib retracement from your swing high. Let me put my magnet on. So again, swing high right here, all the way down to your swing low. And you could pull retracement this way as well. Put your gold in pocket. Same thing, right? So this ulti price ultimately ends up pushing up through here, actually coming right to your 786. Look at that. All right, but price comes up through your different fib levels and comes right into your golden pocket. You find a nice bit of resistance around here, pretty good pullback before ultimately pushing higher. And then now this resistance is broken. So now you're looking to your next Fibonacci level, which is your 786. So if you were to draw a line from this 786 right here, it is the exact perfect top. So again, this is another um, another reason with Fibonacci, again, level to level. But you got the reaction off of the golden pocket, nice pullback, ultimately breaking through this and then moving right to your next Fib target, 786, big rejection from there, but ultimately making a new high, right? So that's another example. And then let's see. I guess we can just do a current one. So this is current. So like I'm gonna go on a lower time frame. Let's do maybe like a 15 minute. So there's a bunch of different pulls that I can do from here. So I mean, even very locally. So this is happening right now, okay? Now the trend is pretty strong to the downside at the moment. Like this is pretty good, you know. It, it, I mean, we did make a new all time high, but it is like looking a little bit weaker. But just for example purposes, like if you're trading, if you're scalping this region, for example, you can take a fib retracement of this high down to your current low. And this is your golden pocket right here. That wasn't exactly perfect. Got to make it perfect. There we go. So this locally, again, you have your swing high, you have your clear swing low here. And now you're looking for price, which again, we came basically up to the 382 and then rejected off of there for now. Um, here is your 0.5. Here's your golden pocket. This is ultimately what I think, you know, typically you could get if, if price does end up moving up to here. I do you think you probably get a pretty good reaction off of it? But this is very like this. Again, we haven't this is new. This hasn't happened yet. So this is um, this is an example of a bearish fib retracement, though, that you can pull right here right now. That's how I would do it. I'm going to talk about the standard fib retracement level. So if you go again, I, I actually put that chart back up here, the one that we went over in the very beginning. Um, you probably can see all the individual, um, all the indi all the individual fibs that are up there, all of the different lines. But if you can go back, you know, if you need to, and and take a look. But I'm going to talk about each fib retracement level and what typically I look for um, to have happen if price comes down to those levels and reverses. 
Okay, so like kind of what that means, like how to interpret this. Because I think if you're just starting out and you've never seen these, you're wondering, there's a, what are all these lines? How do I know like what to look for? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna try to walk you through that a little bit here. So again, for the fib retracements, and this is a bullish fib retracement. These are automatically calculated once you have your swing low and your swing high. So you see, as you pull them on your chart, when you start from your swing low and you're pulling it up to your swing high, that all of the FIB levels will automatically calculate to wherever those two positions are, wherever those two swing low, the swing highs are, okay? And they are measured in percentage from the swing low and swing high. So that's, so it's basically the retracement, okay? They're percentages. So the first one, it, the 0 0.236, that's 23.6% um, retracement level. So in this example, again, right here, you have your low up to your high. And then as price starts coming down, this first red fib retracement level that you see here is your 0 0.236. And again, what that means is once price made a high and rotated back down and hit this red line, okay, that price is 23.6% off of the high. So that's all that means. And then it works its way down. So if price hits the 0 0.236 and you get a bounce from there, typically in very, very strong trends, I honestly don't use a 236 very often at all. That's kind of one that I, I, I ignore for the most part, but it is, you know, again, when you see, um, when you see really strong trends and price only retraces, to the 0 0.236 it is like and it, it pivots from there and makes a new high that is a very 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 strong trend so that's kind of one of those you don't see that very often um but it's on it, you know it's it's on the fib extension tool i pay attention to it but it's not something that typically you know i put a whole ton of weight on now the next few levels are absolutely the most played i will say you know, as far as bots and algos go, they're well aware of these targets. Um, human traders, you know, these are like, there's a lot of people who are well aware of these Fibonacci levels. And oftentimes, like when they come down to these supports, especially when you get down to that golden pocket region, you like, you will quite often see um, many instances of, of respect around there. And those are typically pretty decent areas to um, look to take positions again it's better if you have confluence obviously um, but those are you know the next few levels that i'm going to talk about definitely are on my radar um, as i'm pulling these fib retracements so the 0 0.382 what's so special about this it is literally the opposite of the 618 okay so if you take the two of them you add them up the 382 plus the 618 equals one so it is literally the opposite of the 618 and again in strong trends whether bullish or bearish if you are getting retracements to the 0 0.382 and you're getting a pivot from there and price reverses and makes new lows or new highs that is a that is a sign of a very very strong trend and definitely one that i pay um, a lot of attention to typically if price loses the 0 0.382 and there's a clean break below that i am going to be aware of the 0 0.5 which is a 50% retracement because again when you when you're taking 50% um retracement of you know a bullish again like a bullish trend or bearish trend doesn't matter typically that's that's the EQ level or the equilibrium level of that move very likely to see some kind of response here and you actually did see it it's kind of hard to see here but here's your green line your 0 0.5 price comes across again from the high it comes down to the 50% region. You see, it actually get a pretty nice bounce off here before it ultimately rolls over and puts in the actual reversal um, down to the golden pocket. But that's another thing. The 0 0.5 or the 50% retracement level is very important. Um, but when the 0 0.382 is very well respected, meaning it puts in a nice reaction and you get a decent bounce off of that, but then price ultimately rolls over and loses the 0 0.382, the 
The next FIB level that I really am looking for a strong reaction is the 618. And again, part of that is because the 382 is the opposite of the 618. A lot of times when the 382 is shown respect, right? It gets a bounce off of that level and then ultimately rolls over. Then the 0 0.618 is the default one that I'm looking at. Um, so again, I talked about the 0 0.5, 50% retracement, the, the equilibrium point of that, you know, whatever retracement that you're pulling, that's always going to be a critical level. And for those of you not to get too far um, outside of our current topic, but if you understand Ichimoku, you'll know why the 0 0.5 is, is really an important, um, an important level to be paying attention to. Then we're getting into the real, like, again, the, 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 the powerful part of Fibonacci, which is the 0 0.618, which is the, the golden level. Okay, that is, that is a huge, huge, huge level, um, to always be aware of. And then the 0 0.66, which again, the two of those form the golden pocket. All right. Very important, which you saw from this example. And again, I promise if you go and start pulling fib retracements on many different charts, you're going to see how many times you get really strong reactions off of the golden pocket. So below that though, when you start getting into the real deeper retracements. So the 0 0.786, definitely on my radar, especially if you lose the golden pocket, that is naturally going to be the next area of support that you would be looking for. Um, and, you know, again, in a bullish retracement, that's the next area of support. In a bearish retracement, that is going to be the next level of resistance, okay? So it just flips. But the 7.86 is a deeper retracement target. And it's a really great level of support or resistance, depending on which pool you're using, um, with other forms of confluence. So that is definitely something that I pay attention to. Um, just like the 886, we'll get into a second, 0 0.786, you know, it's used for harmonics and, and, and that type of stuff. So the 0 0.886, which again, is basically an 88.6% retracement, which is very deep. Um, but it, you know, when there's other forms of confluence lining up, that again is another fib level that I want to definitely be aware of. And it is definitely, again, when it comes to harmonic patterns, you will see the 886 being utilized in some of those. So um, anyway, that is kind of a breakdown for the Fibonacci levels, the standard fib levels that you see on the retracement tool. And again, for me, the 382, the 0 0.5, and then the golden pocket, those three real levels there are definitely the most important for myself. They're, they're the ones that get probably the most action, I'd have to say. So that's why I wanna spend a little bit of time breaking that down for you. So Fibonacci confluence, again, you're gonna recognize this from the first video, but I think this is very important to go over again. And there's, again, when it comes to Fibonacci confluence, I discussed it when we were charting the very first chart of this video, uh, where you have multiple different Fibonacci retracements. Um, and you have different levels. So the 0 0.5 was lining up right where the 0 0.618 was. So going back to that example, we are charting Dixie. And, um, you know, when you have that type of confluence, they can get, you know, basically add strength to that level being an important level. And sure enough, you know, again, the 0 0.5 of the larger FIB pool lining up with the 0 0.618 of the smaller FIB pool. Really nice confluence at that level. Got a 16% bounce off that. And then fibs on their own, you know, are incredible tools to use to add confluence to other indicators. Like I've mentioned a couple of times now, whether it be a horizontal level, um, EMAs, pivots, that type of stuff. Uh, when they're used in conjunction with Fibonacci, I think it adds a lot of um, confluence and a lot of power to those, um, to that, that trading style as well. So a couple of things to wrap this up. Um, some helpful tools, hopefully, or helpful tips is our FIB retracement levels, ideal places to place stop losses. So can they help you identify good stop losses? My answer is no. I always use market structure to place stop losses. I do not rely on FIB levels. I do to some degree, and I'll explain in a second, uh, but I do not solely rely on Fibonacci levels to help me determine where my stop losses go. I'm, I'm going to use market structure to tell me where to place those. Uh, for example, though, if market structure for some reason told me, hey, 
you know, the stop loss would be in this golden pocket for whatever reason. That was a thing. Um, I would never place my stop loss in a golden pocket, which believe me, a lot of people do. Like you, you end up people who are unaware of fib levels. A lot of times they place their stops in, and it's literally like right above the 618. And if it's coming out to get hit, it's very likely going to get hit and then probably reverse from there, to be honest. And people wonder how their stops, like some, oh, wow, my stop loss got hit and price reversed right away. Little do they know there could have been like a very important Fibonacci level right below that. And price comes down there and bots and algos, humans, we're all buying this because we know these levels exist, right? And um, then price reverse, you're wondering what just happened. So that's an example. So again, no, I do not use Fibonacci to place my stop losses. I use market structure, but I wouldn't like, again, if I, and I'm well aware of where the Fib levels are on my charts most of the time, um, I definitely would not put my stop loss above some kind of critical level like that though, because there's a high probability that it'll get taken out. Um, so that is kind of, so I do know, I guess I do use it a little bit, but I, it's definitely not something that I use you know, it's not, it's not how I um, come up with my stop losses. Definitely not. So are FIBs helpful to use as take profit levels? It's kind of a similar answer to the first one. So I don't rely solely on Fibonacci levels. Um, like I don't just pull retracements and, and immediately target, you know, this, this level. I like to use, you know, I like to see different i like to see confluence at the levels that i'm looking for even when it comes to taking profit but i am a little bit more lenient with this one and especially when you have the golden pocket right so let's say that i took a long i'm gonna be there's a bearish fib retracement to pull i'm gonna pull it and i'm definitely gonna know where that golden pocket is because i'm likely um you know i'm again i'm gonna be at least setting an alert there to watch and see what the reaction looks like if I maybe should take a bit of profit, if my, if my, you know, if price moves that direction or if there's something else that's lining up near the golden pocket. So again, let's say that there's a, hor uh, a horizontal support and resistance level lining right up at the golden pocket as well. So you have the confluence there. Absolutely. I would be using that as a take profit and I likely would front run it a bit. So front running, just a very quick, um, what front running is, is simply just taking, you know, again, so it's taking profit just before that big major resistance level um, is there. So that's all front running is you're basically just cutting, you know, so like if you're wanting to take profit, let's say that there's a massive um, important Fibonacci level at $10,000 as price is moving up, I might sell at like 9980 or something like that. So that's what front running is. And then, um, so again, if there's a major level of confluence aligning with the FIB level, I tend to front run those. This is exactly what I said on when taking profit, because if you put it right at that level, there's a chance that, you know, again, if there's really strong reason for there to be a reaction off of there, that alone could get front run, which happens sometimes. And like, it doesn't perfectly come to touch your 618, for example. Um, it, it might come within a few dollars of it and then reverse sharply and you, you won't actually get a hit. So that's why I do front run my targets um, quite often. And then Fibonacci extension. So that's not something I'm going to talk about in this specific module. It will be or, or in this module, but in this video, it's definitely going to be in a future video later on in this module. But that is, I, I really like to use Fibonacci extensions when looking for take profit levels as well. So that is something I will touch on. So that wraps it up for the Fibonacci extensions. I hope that that makes sense. If it's brand new to you, I definitely suggest watching the video at least once more um, just to make sure that you have a really good grasp on how to use it. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously, I spend the majority of my day in Discord. That's where you're going to find me. I do, you know, I am active on Twitter. I don't always get to my DMs though, just because between all the different platforms that I have, I get just like hundreds of DMs a day sometimes. Um, but I am active on Twitter when it comes to Facebook, uh, I may or may not be deleting that just because there's so much spam that's been on Facebook lately. Um, again, YouTube, you're obviously watching it here in the telegram. I am active there. We have quite a few members, but if you have questions about this, you know, come in, we're trying to build a trading community there. You know, I think we have 
I mean, almost 9,000 in Discord. Obviously, I would say the majority of people in Discord are here for trading bots. Um, but, you know, we're hoping to add some more members to our community who are passionate about technical analysis as well. Um, but that being said, I hope that you found this video useful. There's so much more um, to learn when it comes to Fibonacci. And we have many more videos in this specific module um, to get through. But hopefully, again, um, hopefully I was able to help you out a bit. That being said, trade safe out there. We'll see you on the next one.